Good morning, everybody. Uh, I got a little bit to show off today. Um, not too much. Uh, most of the time that I've been spending has been working on rewriting the programming uh, behind the DualShock 4 communication and uh, actually pretty much developing an API for it. Um, I wanted a, a streamlined wrapper around the DualShock 4 that takes all the different types of communication, your USB, your uh, Sony adapter, your Bluetooth, and funnels them into one, uh, one object, one device, uh, streamlined uh, for, you know, program usage. Uh, whereas right now, my code that communicates with the DualShock 4 is kind of spread all over Input Mapper and uh, not very coherent at all. Um, so, I mean, I got a little bit to uh, more like tech demo stuff. I haven't had a chance to implement it into Input Mapper yet because it's, it is still uh, something I'm working on here. Um, but I'm writing my API here, which is called MyShock. Uh, and in turn, I have a sample uh, window here, sample application, which is um, referencing my MyShock API. And I have a couple controls bound to it. Um, you see there's like no real code going on here. I'll pull up my code behind. That's just default stuff, empty. Um, but, you know, using the API, I can get, you know, map that controller to... Uh, some basic stuff here. Um, this is a, a list box and that's bound to a, a list of devices here on the device enumerator. Um, and all of these uh, little sliders and controls here on the right hand side are bound to the selected, selected device there. Uh, a couple of the properties in their connection type is alive, uh, LX, LY. And you can see with just those simple bindings, um, I'll go ahead and start the application here. Uh, with just those simple bindings, I'm able to get my DualShock controller input here into this application because the API is handling everything on the back end. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and power this up. This is my uh, controller that's attached to the Sony uh, official adapter here. I'll go ahead and select that controller there and you see is a live adapter. And I got a couple sliders there, which are showing off the uh, the left stick input. Um, and the is alive uh, is important to input mapper because that's now going to be the default um, property that is going to check to see whether or not the controller is actually connected and sending information and all that. Because you'll see when I started this up, uh, that controller list there was empty because the adapter. Um, had not found a controller yet and anything, so uh, it, it was empty, but then when I turned this on, this controller popped up in that list. Well, watch what happens when I turn the controller off. I'm holding down the PlayStation button. Uh, it'll take another couple of seconds to actually shut off. There we go. You see the controller still reports as present because that USB dongle is still attached, but since the controller is not on anymore, not sending data. So uh, I needed to create my own way to detect whether or not you know these, this controller is actually still there or not just the dongle being present and that's by creating my own is alive property and you know that's helpful to me to streamline you know the controller uh, showing up and leaving and all that in input mapper it'll make it a lot easier to handle in there. Um, and to any other developer that you know decides they might want to use my API, um, that takes away a lot of their need to write a whole bunch of code that you know reads packets and reads uh, for timeouts and whether or not you know the device is timed out and is theoretically not connected anymore. That it, it takes away the need for them to have to worry about that. So that's the adapter. Um, I got another controller here which is paired via Bluetooth. Go ahead and turn that guy on. There it is. You see that one pops up in the list now. Go ahead and click over to that. See, I got my input on that one now. And uh, see, since this is just these are bound to whatever selected over here, I can just click through them. Uh, real simple. Um, no programming knowledge really needed to just quickly bind this stuff. Um, I'll do the same thing with the Bluetooth here. I'll shut this off. And uh, you'll see the way that Windows treats Bluetooth, even though a com 
the uh, device isn't actually on or active anymore, device, the window still reports the device is paired and connected. Uh, it like leaves a ghost behind. So that's always been a pain in the ass for Bluetooth. Um, but you know, I've streamlined that as well. That showed that that isn't alive anymore either. Um, and you know, they can come back out of being in a dead state. I'll go ahead and turn that back on. And there's my Bluetooth again. So, uh, that's, you know, and the benefit of it is, like I said, uh, with the API handling all the communication and the difficult stuff in the background, um, developers, uh, specifically me with Input Mapper or any other developer that might want to, you know, get in touch with me that is interested in using this API, um, they don't have to worry about doing really anything. Um, of course, this is, you know, WPF and your binding controls and all that, you know, that's handy for uh, people developing tools and, you know, utilities like Input Mapper. Um, but for game developers, what they really care about is, you know, how the object handles and the, the back end and the code. Um, so right now I'm only developing it in C Sharp. Um, I do have ambitions of maybe uh, possibly making a C++ version. But right now it's just for C Sharp because that's what I use. Um, but, you know, that'll be helpful to Unity developers because a lot of them work with C Sharp. So um, you'll see here I'm in the back end for that window now. Uh, I'm already calling my, my MyShock API as a reference there. So what we're going to do is um, create an instance of the enumerator object. And most games have a loop, uh, some sort of a thread that handles their frame output. And since that's looping, we'll do that. And to access the controls, um, just like you would with the Xbox 360 uh, API, it's as simple as, you know, saying, go into this. Uh, we go into the devices enumerator, and that returns a, a list. Uh, in this case, we're going to take the first controller. And we're going to treat that as a DualShock 4. Um, and I have uh, the reason why it's uh, not strongly typed list, because I'm thinking about adding support. Uh, for like the DualShock 3 and other controllers uh, into it as well. So uh, right now you got to specifically say or cast it as a DualShock 4. Um, and that's how you get all of your inputs there. So just like people will with the 360 API and why that's so popular, um, they can just go in and, you know, they have access to... Uh, They have access to all the controls and all that stuff uh, just by simply going into the, the properties of that device. So, um, still something I'm working on. Uh, it's definitely going to help me on Input Mapper side quite a bit by you know tying all the three different programs I have together right now that I'm working on. Um, I got my Input Mapper one, Input Mapper two, and Imp Input Mapper uh, Light. Um, all in development right now, and to be able to tie together uh, the DualShock 4 communication under one single API that I can update and work on and have it affect all the programs across the board is, you know, greatly helpful to me. Um, and it'll keep, you know, all three programs up to date and relevant as I find bugs in the API and fix it and release it, and it'll sub subsequently release for all three um, products. So... Uh, I mean, it's greatly, it's a huge help for me on the input mapper side. And uh, for any other developers that, you know, think they might be interested in getting their hands on it, um, you know, let me know. I'm not sure um, how I'm going to really work a distribution of it right now. Um, there, there is going to be some sort of a licensing in place for it. Um, I want to I want to keep it free uh, to free developers. Um, but if there are any... Uh, like indie studios or something like that that want to use it. Um, it'll be on a case-by-case -case basis right now. Uh, not really sure how, but 
I'll figure something out. But yeah, if you guys have any comments about that, let me know. Um, you yeah, have any projects going on or want to get your hands on it to tinker with it, you know, let me know about that as well. And that'll do it for this week, guys. Have a good one.